Good morning and welcome to a, another business to business webinar. You want to back announce that song? Because <laughs> this is your choice. We do a little bit of grooving and dancing. What is that? What are we listening to? I, I felt the urge that we should all walk out this morning to uh, Wall of Voodoo and the Far Side of Crazy. It's um, one of my favourite hits from uh, you know the, the, the late eighties. The late eighties, <laughs> in fact, is a uh, uh, Wall of Voodoo, um, Far Side of Crazy on the the album Complete Eighties. Uh, that's where we start this morning, and I think the far side of crazy is uh, a safe place to call where we're going to be, and what we're going to be talking about today. So this morning, uh, I'm, you can tell uh, quite easily, I'm doing, I'm scooching in. Oh, you check the camera and the camera moves. Uh, this morning, I'm joined by uh, Natasha Hobson and Nikki, and they're going to be talking about assembling your team. So this is uh, number eight in the webinar series, Business to Business. And we thought we'd try something a little bit different, so we're doing it in the room. Can I get a hands up if you can hear me okay? Because I don't... <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen, didn't you guys? I, yeah, Jamie's good, Stacey's good, good to see you. Roberto, great, you can hear us. Excellent, Holly, good to see you on. All right, so we'll get started. So, assembling your team. Now, uh, before we jump in uh, as MC for the today, I'd just say that there's a Q&A button down the bottom. You've got also got the chat. If you type into either of those, I'll be monitoring that and uh, teaching or telling the girls if it's a good question. If it's not a good question, I'll tell them anyway. And uh, we're on for about 30 minutes today. So this is part of the series. It was based on the Business to Business book. Is my little prop. Yes. There we go, you can hold that. Uh, we're up to chapter 13 now, uh, but we've been jumping around a, a little bit. Uh, so chapter 13 was on Assembling Your Team by Natasha Hobson. And I'm gonna ask Natasha and Nikki to tell me a little bit about uh, the business experience so you know kind of where this advice is coming from. Sure, so I've been in the dental industry myself uh, since the late 90s. I started as a dental assistant and moved into you know, being like a senior dental assistant and coordinating different aspects of the practice and eventually became a practice manager. And then I, uh, I did area management for a little while where I worked for a large corporate and I ran four clinics for them, which was a, a lot of driving and a lot of rocking out to music on the way. <laughs> on my way to Toowoomba once a week. The far side of crazy? <laughs> Always. No, no. Well, you know, it depends. <laughs> Sometimes I, it depends on the mood, you know. Often I like to, to rock a bit of Leonard Cohen on the long car trips. But, um, yeah, so I, I had the opportunity to buy a dental practice uh, from my father who was retiring. I'd not really worked with him for many years because I didn't want nepotism to be one of those charges that was slung at me. And uh, so he said, I'd like to retire. Would you like to buy my practice? And I said, yeah, I think I'm ready to do that. And that was in about 2011. So I thought that it would be an easy transition because, you know, I'd been managing other people's practices for several years. But um it was quite challenging and uh, it was it was a whole new, different kind of nightmare when I first bought it. And, uh, you know, I, it, it took me about a good, uh, let's say seven to eight months to kind of settle, like of working, you know, six days a week to, to get it to a point where I could build the culture where I wanted and I had the team kind of where I wanted. But, you know, it's it never stays the same. Uh, you know, business is never just static. It's always changing. It's always fluid and you just always have to adapt. And um, Nikki's background is quite different from mine. Uh, yep, so not a business owner. I've worked <laughs> in um, government, mainly army, as a soldier, as a mechanic, then as dental. And after that, well, with that, overseas, remote localities, unknown teams until you meet them when you land on the ground, unknown conditions until you find them when you land on the ground, and eventually came to the civilised side of the world and started working in private practice after leaving the military. I did jump around a little bit, uh, filling in for girlfriends mainly, not really sure if I wanted to jump in that deep end and work full time. <laughs> Still, um, not <laughs> Still not sure. Still not sure. And then um, came to give Natasha some ideas about her business and she hired me. 
and we've been together ever since. Like the best of friends. <laughs> Completely opposite, but the best of friends. <laughs> Nicole's very detail oriented and I'm very big picture. And um, so I'll say, I want to do this grand thing. And he'll be like, no, <laughs> we need to do this, 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 and this, and this. And I'm like, hmm. Yes, that is a bigger undertaking than I thought. Well, let's just do a smaller thing and we can we can work through projects and stages <laughs> rather than sweeping changes. If we could all do changes at Natasha's level, it would be amazing. It well, would be amazing. The world would be amazing. It would be amazing. <laughs> it would probably be like pandemic amazing. <laughs> so you've got some notes that you want to go through, but I want to ask before you get started, what your first hire. Uh-huh. Do you remember your first hire? The first person you hired? Uh, no, like, do you mean the first person I hired in the business that I own now or the first person I hired in general? Oh, I don't mind. If you remember either one, it's going to make a better story. If you don't yeah, remember yeah. either right, one, so we're a bit dead in the, the water right now. First person, Just saying. <laughs> the first person that no I... No pressure. That's okay. So the first person I hired in general was a complete and total disaster uh, because... I was really intimidated during the, the interview process because I'm, I'm like, I'm here, I'm interviewing a dentist and they've got degrees and I dropped out of university seven times and, you know, <laughs> got all these things and I'm just like this little kid quaking in my boots. Um, yeah, they were a total disaster and, um, and, and they, they really weren't suitable. I did have like a matrix that I was following because I was working for a large company and they're like, you need to ask these questions, you need to write down these thoughts. And, and I did. And, and it, they, they weren't, I had some reservations about them, but we were a little bit um, low on dentists at the time. So uh, the, in the particular uh, practice, well, it was like a corporate, a bit low on, on applicants. So I ended up hiring them and they didn't end up lasting. So the first person that I hired for my business, um, I, I, it's I've all right. made so, lots of mistakes. I, I, I should probably just like, you know, I've made lots of mistakes. Like I sometimes I hire people because I feel sorry for them. And um, well, I have in the past hired people because I feel sorry for them, but then it doesn't work out. So then I ended up doing the whole, no, no, there's my, what's my, what's my phrase? I'm always saying, Nikki. And improve the patient experience. Well done. And improve the patient experience. Does this enhance or improve yes. the patient's experience? So so um, that's not what you do now. So let so, so what do you do, what do now? Do. Well, that's what I do now. So, so, is, is yeah. I ask those questions now. So um, when I look at a person, I, I say, will this person enhance my patient's experiences? And um, I think it all starts really from the mm -hmm. job ad perspective when you first start um, mm -hmm. looking for an applicant. So I like to sit down and visualize the kind of person that I want, and I, I write the ad tailored to that particular kind of individual. Have you? Did I give you that book to read that I'm always crapping on about? Mm -hmm. uh, the Hero and the Outlaw. It's an amazing marketing book, and it sort of I'm a little bit pretentious, which I will totally be the first to admit. And um, I, I love psychology and uh, philosophy and everything else. So The Hero and the Outlaw is an amazing marketing book that deals with Jungian archetypes and how Jungian archetypes affect your business and your marketing and your team and yourself. And it's it's just a great book. Can't recommend it enough. It's available now on Amazon. Uh, Probably. <laughs> no sponsorship there. <laughs> um, it's a great book. Um, but um, one of the things that, that I, I, I know about dentistry is dentistry really corresponds with that caregiver archetype. And so when I'm looking for people to add to my team, I'm really wanting people who like to look after other people and who like to help other people. Mm. And those kind of people have always been the most successful at fitting into our business. Would you concur or...? Absolutely. Yeah. Like simplified, we want our staff to treat our, our clients as their own family. Yeah. Their dearest grandmother. I was going to say, yeah. hang on, I've seen <laughs> some think, of the people clarify. treat their family <laughs> maybe not quite like that. <laughs> and we like a, a, and, a and loved least, family member. Right? A loved family member. Right. And I think at a leader, we try to demystify dentistry. We don't have, you know, hushed waiting rooms with the carpet and quick ladies at the front desk. We try to make it real and human. Yeah, and, and, and friendly and interactive. Definitely. And and I want I want my dental assistants to have relationships with our patients, you know. I want my dental assistants to ask about little Jimmy and his his um you know, his soccer team that he's trying to get on and I want them to remember that next time and, and I want them to you know, I want parents to excitedly say, Yeah, you'll never guess what happened. Jimmy got on that awesome team or, you know, my daughter's audition went really well and now she's gonna be working with this company or you know, I, I love 
I want to, to interact with people and I like hearing that. It makes my day fun. I love watching people grow absolutely, up. Absolutely, absolutely. Dentistry is incredibly own. technical. It's really quite intensive. There's a thousand things you have to consider when you're doing the work and it's in a confined space with someone who really doesn't like you. So, <laughs> it's like we're watching a cat. <laughs> absolutely. So if you didn't build those connections with your patients, you would not do this job. You would do yourself in three years out of university. Pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I really um, I, I really like that aspect of it in a sense too because I, I really like interacting with people and, and having you know I, I was talking to a patient the other day and we were talking about um, orchids and, and she mentioned that she was going to start wearing this particular orchid that I actually have a ton of in my yard so I was like oh look I'll bring you some because you know it's just taking up space because um, it keeps sending up all these little shoots and and, um, and then another patient who brought me in something because we were talking about things it's just like it's like a little community and a family and I like it like that it, is. Thing. it is. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I've really noticed with us, so working with me can sometimes be stressful. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to really work on that evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so um, working working in dentistry can be challenging at the best of times. So one of the things that I've noticed, so I think we read a little bit about it in the chapter, you know, I like someone who's, who's smart and who's um, able to do the job. It's not a. It's not an easy job. People think oh, being like a dentist or a dentalist. Well, people don't think being a dentist is easy, but they always think being a dental assistant is easy, and it's it's kind of not. <laughs> it's um, it's, not. It's, uh, it's quite a complex, complicated job, and there's a lot of things to juggle at the same time. And one of the things that I realized recently was that the most successful hires that we've had have had you know all of the basic things that I want, as well as having two extra characteristics. So there's two extra characteristics that I've found people must have to live with me for a reasonable amount of time, is that they need to be able to pivot. And take constructive criticism. <laughs> that is what. <laughs> you say that so well. <laughs> so um, so um, for me, so pivoting for me is, um, you know, because we're working in an unknown situation sometimes. So, you know, you think you've got a patient in for a simple extraction and oops, break the tooth, turns into a surgical. Or you're all set up to do something, patient fails to attend, and then some other kid wanders in off the street because they've come off their bike and they've smashed their face and there's blood everywhere. You just need to be able to kind of go, oh, I was doing this, but now I'm doing this and I'm fine with that. And then, you know, just kind of write yourself like that little spinning top and carry on. Yeah. And Nikki loves constructive criticism. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, I'm a dinosaur, I must admit, from my days, if you went to work, finished work, and nobody yelled at you, then you did a good job. That is not the way to run a business in these days. <laughs> But um, we are dealing with a new generation who have been entitled. I truly believe they've been entitled. Oh, I totally wasn't going to get into a generational <laughs> gap, but you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and so sometimes they do need to understand or realise or at least be uh, made aware that they're probably not at the level they think they're at. Um, but they're going to get there and we're going to help them get there. I, I, the I like to use that cupcake analogy on the other occasion, the cupcake analogy. So I, I sort of, I want to, want to help my my new hires distinguish criticism of their performance from criticism of their self, which I feel that a lot of kids are, they, they struggle to do. So the example I give is if I go home tonight and I make a batch of cupcakes, those cupcakes might be absolute crap. They might be dry, they might be burnt, they might be sunk in the middle, the icing float everywhere, like they just might be really terrible, horrible, horrible cupcakes. That doesn't mean that I'm a horrible person. That means that I've made a horrible batch of cupcakes. Now I can go home and I can spend a lot of time and practice and watch a lot of videos and read a lot of books and learn to make amazing cupcakes. And those cupcakes will melt in your mouth and be fantastic. But that doesn't actually make me a good person. That just means I know how to make good cupcakes. So when I'm criticizing your cupcakes or your efforts, I'm not criticizing you. I'm saying, you know, look, there's th this, this could be improved. <laughs> this is not where it should be, this would be better if it was like this. And, um, and and sometimes people can understand it better with that kind of analogy. I am the queen of analogies. <laughs> and I think in my case, because I've not always known my team, I've had to find a team really quickly on the ground. I'm, I'm a little bit opposite to Natasha on that one. I have goals for the task and I just need to know whether the person can do it. If they can be honest about whether they can or they can't, then I can work with that. Um, personalities don't 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 matter to me when the t when it's task driven, but they matter in business. They matter in business for a repeat return. So I, I manage Nicole's like you know this is wrong, and I'm like okay, this well this is law. Yeah, <laughs> this is what we like to do. This is the law. 
and um, Nikki's like, no, it needs to be done this way. We had a little bit of a, a thing yesterday because there's like a, Nikki's like, oh, we need to have this visitor book on the front desk. And I'm like, it looks terrible. <laughs> she's like, you need to have okay. it. And she's like, you need to have a visitor book. And I'm like, but it looks awful. Patients can see it. And, you okay, know, it's a COVID plan. You have to have it in the plan. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's cool, but it can't be where people can see. And we had this back and forth. And we finally came up with a compromise of we can have it at the front desk, but it can't be where patients can see it. Because I, I thought, oh, look, you know, a patient like our appointment book, which, you know, never gets deleted and lists every single person that comes in, that's the equivalent of, of a visitor registry. And she was like, no, 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 Natasha. What about people who come in to do the air conditioning? Service the equipment, of you know, which we had three that morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those kind of people, they need to be recorded. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess they, they should do. be in a workplace <laughs> anyway, but particularly at the moment with our COVID plan, they have to be. <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, yeah, I forget yeah. those people exist because they just pop in and out. Indeed. <laughs> but, yeah, so, all right, that was a big waffle. No, 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 but running your job and, and making sure that they fit what you're looking yeah. for. So that was a, that's where you sort and of like, started. And the job ad, I think, should have, um, it, it should have uh, the tone. The tone should fit your business. So I, I've been, I have a two-year-old. I've had to watch Mary Poppins more times than I would like to admit. <laughs> So, um, you know, one of the things that I know when George Banks writes his his, uh, his thing, he's like, nanny wanted, no, required. And he, he has like this, this very formal list of, you know, um, sharp sounding words yeah. and, you know, and, and whatnot on exactly the kind of nanny that he wants, one who's firm, authoritative, can give directions and commands and boom, boom, boom. And, you know, a bunch of sour-faced cranky old birds show up for the interview. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and the children write the cute little one about how they want someone with a cheery disposition and he'll play games and love them and stuff. And, and Mary Poppins arrives. Um, I, I feel that's, a, that's an accurate demonstration. But no, when you got, um, you think about the culture of your practice, uh, sorry, culture of your business and, and say, you know, I'm looking for a, you know, friendly or happy or honest or hardworking or whatever it is that you're wanting, find a way to, Incorporate, those, incorporate personality traits. Yeah, those personality traits so that because the person rather than the experience base, yeah, because the person who's attracted to those personality points will be easier to train and fit into your business more so than you know, some, someone who's like, Can you do this task, this task, this task, and this task? Because you know, they might be able to do that task, but they might be a complete and total sour lemon that you don't really want on your team. So, bottom line, because Natasha doesn't always ask for experience, she's looking for those personality traits. We will get dozens. Dozens of uh, usually at least four hundred, <laughs> at least. Yeah, and so then you have to learn how to pare that down. Yeah, which is a lot of fun. Um, who doesn't love reading four hundred resumes? Indeed. One of my favourite ways to pass two weeks. It's a team effort. <laughs> 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 but Natasha does have some very um, specific points that she does go through when she's looking at resumes, which culls the pile rather quickly. Yep. Which is that I did go through it in the in the chapter, which is um, you know, looking for spelling grammatical mistakes because ultimately working in dentistry, it's a very attention to detail kind of job. So if you don't have good attention to detail on your resume, chances are you're not gonna have good attention to detail on the it's job. It's also a very heavily communication related job. It's and if you don't know the difference between A N and A N D, I can't live with that. <laughs> 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 uh, we've had some we've had some real real crackers of people that have um both for interviews and, and job applications. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spell check is not always your friend. Because <laughs> you know, people, Grammarly. You people Grammarly. write and they say, I am defiantly the person that you're looking for to fill this role. And I'm like, mm, who are you? Defiant workers, that's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, when you try and say definitely, I have that feeling. <laughs> so um, and like we've we've had some we've had some real corkers. One of the, the mm -hmm. one of the things I frequently get that I'm always telling people when they're sending in, in resumes is to actually read them because you get things where people say, I'm really keen to work in the hospitality industry, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, well, I'm not in the hospitality industry, love. Bin. <laughs> <laughs> or um, we had one that sent in a poem, which was, oh, um, wow. which was, it was quite epic. It was like, it was, a, it was a very long poem. It did end with, I want to fill your hole, which just <laughs> um, <laughs> made me um, feel less... <laughs> <laughs> like they were potentially the right person for the job. <laughs> but memorable. You remember it. I that remember that. You know, five years later, I'm still talking about that poem, girl. And if that's you, well done. <laughs> Didn't get the job, but Memorable, awesome. but yes. Yeah, no. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, even in interviews, we've had, some, we've had some crazy responses. So I always like to ask people about conflict resolution because you get that a bit in dentistry, mm. you know, like two nurses will be, you know, snarky at each other. We work in an estrogen fishbowl, basically. Basically. And, you know, you get patients where, where they'll, 
people will be upset about something like, oh, that's too expensive, or, um, you know, I didn't Patience really understand fear that. fear comes across as aggression quite it a does. lot. Like, quite a lot. And it yeah. is their fear, and sometimes you have to take that step back and not take it too personally and try to find out what's the underlying fear yeah. and how do we allay that. Yeah, and so, so I always ask about communication skills. Now, we had a dentist once who were interviewing, and I had high hopes for her because she had a great-looking resume and she seemed nice enough, and I asked how she dealt with conflict, and, and, and she said... I'm going to paraphrase, but this is basically, well, when I was, you know, uni, I worked at a clothing store and this woman came in and she had a coupon and the coupon was expired and she wanted to use it. But I said, look, it's expired. And the lady said, but I just got it in the mail last week. And I said, look, expired. <laughs> and, and, and the lady got really upset and then she left and then she came back and then she said, what's your name? And I said, well, I don't have to tell you that. <laughs> Then she went and complained to head office and head office investigated and they said I did nothing wrong. And I was like, that's that's your example for conflict resolution. There's no way in heck I'm letting you anywhere near my team or my patients, nothing. I'm really glad I asked that question because yeah, no, you far side of forever. <laughs> so, you know, and we get some good answers, but you know, it's a fun one to say you mind sometimes. Probably a surgeon now. <laughs> Probably. That Probably. would suit that personality yeah, type to a T. <laughs> and you need those sorts of people, but not in our practice. No. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, they're, they're kind of fun. What, can you think of any, any hilarious interview moments you've seen? No, but I do think that the group interview, which Natasha is very passionate about, um, really does help weed things out. It really yeah. helps with those people who are purely putting in a job interview because they've got to tick their welfare box when they Ooh, turn up. Harsh, Nikki, harsh. <laughs> harsh. So, tell us, so, so take us through the group interview, because this is, uh, this is something I've heard of but unique. never seen in practice until I, I, I got to witness one of yours. Well, you it's weed down the resume. You totally do. You ring right, them so all. that's the first process you <laughs> Weed down the resume. Weed the resumes. Weed the resumes and then you ring them and you ask them, you know, some innocuous kind of questions like what prompted you to apply for this job? I know I had someone once that said, um, oh, um, I'm, I'm about to join the army in six months, but they look at it more favorably if you've got some experience working in the real world. And I was like, yeah, no, it takes me a year to train you. <laughs> so, like, so you, you weed them down to people who, who seem reasonable. They don't have to be rude scholars, you know, but they need to sound like they, they've, they've got something going on upstairs. You bring them in, you sit them down. I, I'd like to have no more than 17 realistically, but 15 is a, a better number. So, um, just, so the, just say that number again. How many? 17. I don't like to do more than 17 because I can't fit more than 17 in the room because we don't have enough chairs. <laughs> so so I'm, I'm a, I think there was like 12 in the room when I was there and it was... Yeah, yeah. So 17 is my absolute. So, what actually happens in this situation? So, yep. the door opens and somebody walks in. What happens next? Yep. So, um, so I set up everyone, like I write a name tag for everyone that I'm expecting on a little sticker and I put them all out. People walk in and I say, Hi, you know, you're here for the interview. That's great. Just grab your name, grab a seat. We'll kick off very shortly. Um, frequently, you get people who like walk up and they see all those people and then they freak yeah. out and they run. And <laughs> usually that's like two or three per interview. So, that's why you can book up to 17 because you know, some of them uh, pike at the last minute, shall we say. And it was a shock for some of them. I, is, it there, is, this, it is this a standard thing? You don't tell them it's a group I interview? I don't tell them it's a group interview because I want to see how they deal with pressure and unexpected things because they need to learn to pivot. Nice. Perfect. <laughs> Pass the first <laughs> test. You didn't run away screaming. <laughs> yeah. So um, so we, we sit them all down. We ask the same questions of everyone, but I like to bounce around in, in different people and I like to have the name tag so I can give away their name obviously and I've got a list in front of me where I've got I've made some notes about their resume so you know being very like you know Sally uh background in childcare and you know Rachel background in nursing uh, assistant nursing or something like that so I've got like an idea of what they've previously done or who they are or like you know just left school or something so I can be like okay that's you that's you that's you so then I can work through my list and go so you know Sally how do you deal with conflict and um Rachel same question across the other room and then people in the middle and can you give me an example of it? Yeah. Just to think of how they've dealt with a particularly difficult situation in yeah. the past. It doesn't even have to be work-related. If they haven't had work experience, then it yeah. can be a school yeah. situation. We were working situation. on a group, a group activity at school and Bob yeah. wasn't pulling his weight and this is how I dealt with it. And um, I usually no like... More to, no more Bob. No more Bob. <laughs> no, Bob, Bob. <laughs> Bob's offering poems. <laughs> <laughs> Filling holes, running poems. <laughs> and uh, I like to have the rest of the team there as well, and they all make notes about what they think and what they don't think. And it's funny because we usually end up, the team and I usually end up going, yeah, I like this person the best. 
So we, we, we bounce that around to everyone and you can kind of see who gets into the swing of things and it's like, yeah, I can do this. And, and they start going, yep, I can answer that question better. Ooh, they said what I was going to say, but I'm going to go. You watch them lean forward when she asks the question. She doesn't really nominate who she's asking. Oh, you see people lean forward and like, yep, yeah, they're yeah, here, they're, they're already here. They're, they're into it. And, um, and then I've got, you know, I've got my, my team there sort of standing over the little counter and they're kind of watching and making notes. And then we finish the interview. We usually do a little tour of the practice and, yep. um, and then people, people head off and then we talk about it and we say, okay, well, I like this person, this person, this person. And then we, we weigh up the relative merits and we go, okay, well, we'll get this person into a trial or this person usually likes to have up to three people in for a trial, um, where we sort of, you know, because it's not just about whether or not we like them, it's also about whether or not they like the job. Because some people think, yes, I want to be in dental. And then they see I their first like extraction to. and then they faint. <laughs> <laughs> you do definitely have to have that trial day because it is a very, if you can't get in and amongst it, then you're not the person for the job. Yeah. And if you do pass out at the side of blood or spit, then you're certainly not the person for the job. Well, you could be, because, you know, I've had some good dental nurses that passed out, but, you know. Like, <laughs> well, actually, have Rihanna's actually asked, have you ever had someone who's shined in the interview and then just really not worked out? Have you actually had a painter? I've had fainters. I had, I've had a couple of fainters. And um, I, I've had someone who shined in the interview, but then they didn't work out at all because... And that particular person had a lot of experience, and but they'd been working for the army and they had certificate three, certificate four, and all that kind of stuff, but they didn't know how to do anything more complicated than a filling. And um, it was a little bit disappointing because I thought, yeah, this person will be great. You know, they're good at systems. This is before I met Nikki. They're good at systems. <laughs> <laughs> they can help me with that. But yeah, no, um, they were they were very slow and very methodical, and they couldn't do anything that was complex. And I was a bit like, well, why am I paying you this giant amount when? Because you've got all these certificates and experience when you're not really as good as this person <laughs> over here who doesn't have any certificates or experience. I mean, it sort of has experience, but yes, yeah. So no, it's um, it's a bit of fun. So it is fun, like the the can um, everyone if anyone's actually been in a group interview or seen a group interview, raise your hand because I'm actually curious. I hadn't seen one as I said until I I'd heard about them, but I'd not actually seen one in action until I came to see the craziness. Yeah, Rihanna's been seen one, Stacey's seen one. So there's a few people that have been around yeah. and actually seen these things, but. Um, it's certainly when you've got 400 resumes and you weed it down to, and it, it, you do one round? Um, it depends on how many good people we get. So we can do up to two. I usually don't like to push past two because I think, um, you know, if you didn't get in early, you're probably not really that keen to have the job anyway. Like if you right. come in, you know, because if you're, there's not too many traineeships and dental assisting in ours because um, a lot of people want to work with people who have experience. So if you're not, if you haven't got notifications set up, or as soon as someone advertises a dental assistant training and you're on it, yep. you're probably not. You're probably more Johnny Come Lately rather than a like. This is my burning passion. I must do this. Which is the kind of people I want. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and that exists. It does. It does. I also think from a business model perspective, if you're going to train people, most business models will tell you that training in general is not productive. It is counterproductive. It is. It drops your it drops your production levels. It drops your time management. It puts extra strain on your existing team. It does all of those things, and that is that is absolutely valid. It's 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 been proven in business models again and again and again. However, if you train someone in house, you will get the person that fits your business, and so that has to be worth it. Um, and I think that's what is the big difference with Natasha. She is a big believer in that. The training organisations love her because she will take on the trainees. Um, her staff will get to a point where we get no more, like no more. We're up to capacity. We cannot do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Tear her hair out now. <laughs> but for that first part, they do need to be mentored like any business. You yeah. need to mentor them. And that does put a strain on the staff. So you do need to pick your time in your business when you can take on trainees. Um, but they will, they can also become the best employees you've ever had because they've started from the bottom up. They've worked with everybody and they've yeah. had to experience everything, and, but they've had the nurturing and the mentoring to go with it. And I do mean real mentoring. Yeah, and, and I, I like it as well because, um, you know, you don't get someone who's got bad habits that they've established previously and you also can get people... We're, we're in Logan. Logan has a very high youth unemployment rate and I'm quite... This has been my bugbear for the last many years, as anyone who knows me has undoubtedly heard me yak on about before. <laughs> um, uh, we have, we, I think it was something over 20% last time I looked for, for youth unemployment in general, Logan. So I want to give some young kid a chance to get into the industry and to build themselves a career. And, and a lot of our dental assistants have gone on to do some really awesome things, and some have gone to uni, and some have started families, and some have 
you know, um, one of one of my external assistants went on to manage like uh, like 30 chairs for a large corporate and, and stuff. And she's just, you know, people, they, they do great things. It's lovely to get to know people at the beginning of their careers and watch them. Um, as they so you have to develop. keep that into your business model as well. How yeah. much time and effort are you going to spend on this person? And is there going to be a return of service obligation or a minimum amount, you know, if you are going to fund their training, um, all that sort of stuff. Cash doesn't do this. She wins it. <laughs> do, as I, do as I say, not as I do. See, Nicole thinks about things more deeply. <laughs> I go, let's wait for the three months probation be through before we just hop them on that course. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I like to, uh, yeah, I'd sort of, I, I tend to go more with my gut. I'm like, yeah, I've got a good feeling about this person. And it doesn't always work out. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, this person's great. And then they're not. But, you know, from a business, again, for me with the strategies and everything, from the business model, if you, have, if you have your budget for your training or your team training, whether it's your own team or whether you're taking on trainees, you can set your own KPIs, you can figure out how much you want to spend on that and whether you're in the position to do so. And then if you do train someone and they leave in a short amount of time, you might need a little bit more time before you take on the next one. Or you might change some of the parameters about how you take on that next one. Yeah. So how many people would you have hired um, now, like just ballpark for us. Um, so, <laughs> so you've seen 400 resumes per, per <laughs> ad you put out. So yep. the amount of resumes, how many jobs, how many, like what's, what do the numbers look like for you? So at the moment we have a team of about nine dental assistants. Um, but over the years I have put probably close to 20 people through a traineeship. Yep. Um, so uh, I've helped 20 people get their start in, in dentistry and not all of them have stayed in dentistry. Some have gone off to, to other industries or We've had that? students who come to the industry experience. With that too, yeah. So they were never meant to be employees. Yeah. Um, but a lot of um, students or potential students find it hard to do that because um, workplaces won't take them on. Yeah. yeah. Whereas Natasha's always been willing to do that. So you know, we. But it's good because you do keep the you do keep in touch with them. So yeah. you know, if someone does have a maternity leave or something like that, you can go, oh well, you know what? When such and such was here, they were great. I really yeah. like their personality. They were new. They were raw. They hadn't learned everything, but. They were keen and they were enthusiastic and we kept their details, they call them. <laughs> nice. So just for those playing along at home, uh, if you have uh, 20 employees and you do 15 uh, in an interview, we only take one, that's 300 people that you've put through interviews and just quickly in my head, that's 8,000 CVs mm. that you've been weeding through to get those 20 people. And I'm assuming there's more than that because that's only the people that got through the training ship. Yeah, well, yeah. Actually, because well, because we're stepping through this, so Natasha was saying, you know, you, she rings her, her short list, brings them in for trial day. Sometimes they don't turn up. Mm, that's like sometimes they don't turn up. Sometimes they turn up late. Yeah. <laughs> and you kind of go, hmm, okay, who else was on that list? <laughs> um, but also it gives them experience. We do ring the ones back that we thought really had potential, but we just do not have the room to accommodate them. Yeah. And it gives them that CV, that interviewing experience, a quite a big one if they've never been to a group interview before. And that in itself is valuable for them. Yeah. And, and look, and the ones who do really well that I just can't fit in, who I actually quite liked, um, I know a lot of dentists because I've been in the industry for a long time. And so if I know someone else is hiring, I will say, do you mind if I pass your resume to this person that I know is looking for someone at the moment? And usually people are quite happy with that. Um, because you know the dentist that I know is happy with that because they're like, oh well, I don't have to recruit now because you've done all that millions of steps for me and you're sending me someone who you think is good. So. Yeah. Um, and you should get commission for that. Just I totally <laughs> could. Why am I not? Uh, <laughs> you'll get, it comes back in karma. We it all does. love you dearly. So um, we are over the, the, oh, are we? Okay, the, sorry. the time. Tim gets all my dot points. I was going to say, do you want to? No, it's fine. Is there anything in particular that you did want to Is there anything to anyone wants to ask? Or? There was one question that came in from Emma. Um, mm -hmm. Have you ever used an employment service provider to help with hiring staff? No. Yes. Oh, okay. It ended badly. Okay. Um, so. That was, the, yeah, so we, um, I used an employment service provider. I've used them probably a, a couple of times, I guess. So I've used people, that there's some dental providers that do temporary stuff. So, you know, your dental nurse is sick and you're like, I'm up the creek. Uh, I desperately need someone today. They'll send you someone. Um, they send people that are quite exy. And, um, and if you want to hire those people, it's a ridiculous fee to yeah it's it's um it's a bit crazy uh, which is what you have to pay when you're desperate uh so i kind of it wasn't my favorite experience i intend never to be desperate again you're weighing it up <laughs> against your loss of production for the day for not having the person though that's, yeah and that's why their fees are so high yeah and um and i had a 
I had a had someone approach me and say, would you be interested in taking on a train a school-based trainee um, from a disadvantaged background? Blah de blah de blah de blah de blah. And I sort of went, oh, usually I just like to hire the best person for the job. I don't usually like to hire any other kinds of, of things. But they were like, oh no, no, this would be really good. We'd do all the recruitment for you. We'd get lots of resumes, we'd go through and we'd find the best person. And I said, okay, well, I need them to start on, let's say the first of September, because that's when I'm, I'm looking to do this. And they said, okay, so we will. So two weeks before the first of September, I'm like, how are we going? Have we got that staff member? Oh no, not not yet. September comes. Have we got that staff member? No, no, not yet. Um, you know, a couple of weeks later, they send me one person. They had two people apply for the role um, who met their disadvantaged criteria. And, um, and they, they sent us a, a, an assistant. And this particular assistant didn't really want to be a dental assistant, but her mother wanted her to be a dental assistant. She really wanted to be a dancer. And um, she would cry every time she came into the office. Um, I, she, you know, because she didn't want to be there, or she'd be whatever, and she'd, she'd just be overly, you know, sad. And um, she never had a lift home. And so the girls were running, my, my dental assistants were running her home. Um, they were buying her lunch because she didn't have any money, even though we were paying her. I think her mother had substance abuse issues and was um, taking her wages, which is very sad. And I, and it's really hard yeah. to, to stay on the peripheral to look after the, the person and not get involved Yeah. Uh, when, you're not, when you're really not qualified to be involved. But and, and then like um, I, I rang the employment agency when we're coming to the end of the promotion period and I'm like, look, I don't think this is working out. I don't think this girl wants to be a dental assistant. You know, she tells everyone that she doesn't. And then they booked a, an interview and they came out and they basically accused me of lying. And I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> No. Right. So it, it yeah. wasn't a good experience. In fact, no. David has uh, piped up and also said the same here. He was desperate in a survival situation, but they brought in more problems. Yeah. I, I think them. you need to be careful with some of those agencies that are geared for that because they have a quota to fill. Yeah. And sometimes they're just inclined to fill that quota when it really the outcome's not good for anybody. And your yeah. staff are really that front line of your business. They're, they, they're the protection. Yeah. You have to protect your business. You have to be the guardian to make sure that what you were saying uh, does it enhance the patient's experience? Does it enhance the patient experience? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, really interesting uh, insights, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been lovely having you both with oh, me in the again. studio. Let's call it a studio. studio. Really not, but let's studio call studio. it a studio. Yeah, studio, studio, studio. Like studio, studio. Welcome to studio, studio. I'm studio. your host, Stuart Fleming. <laughs> I'm the president of the Logan Chamber of Commerce, and I'm going to share my screen just quickly to run through uh, a few extra slides here. Uh, so this is part of, as I said, part of the webinar series from Business to Business based on the book compiled by Jackie Thompson, the very lovely Jackie Thompson. Uh, we give you a wave. Hi, Jackie. Um, next week we have, uh, as you can see on the screen there, uh, management of staff by Wayne Rabinot. Wayne uh, was the inventor of the Dash Mat and created a massive business out of that. He was also part of uh, the Logan Office of Economic Development. I know Holly Walton and Jamie are watching. Give them a wave. Hi, Holly. Hi, Jamie. We love you. Uh, if you are looking for uh, assistance um, with COVID, you can go to the Logan Chamber website, uh, also loed.com.au. I'm going to give the right uh, URL last night, I gave the old, really old one. Uh, the right one, loed.com.au, but loganchamber.com.au, you can sign up for the newsletter, which is free. You can also sign up for membership, which is free. Next week, uh, same bat time, same bat channel, we'll be talking to Wayne Rabnot about management of staff, and then we work into uh, culture the following week, uh, through the power of many with Robert. Uh, really looking forward to hearing that one. So that's next week, management of staff. Um, you will get a notification about it. This is our committee. Uh, I know there are a few, a few watching today, so hi to you guys. Uh, the Chamber is a volunteer organisation. We are the longest running uh, business organisation in Logan. And, you know, we're doing some really good stuff for business, especially during COVID. And this is just one of our initiatives. Uh, so if you know any of these members or you see them or you want to meet them, please connect with them on Facebook or LinkedIn. Please connect on our Facebook page. Uh, so that's um, at the Logan Chamber Facebook page. And of course, we thank all of our sponsors, the Logan Office of Economic Development, Invest Logan, 101 FM, Meadowbrook. And the, um, we, we have our functions quite often, uh, Rebel and the Breeze, who have been great sponsors to us and, and do lots of radio stuff. And they're doing a lot with COVID at the moment as well. And and the fabulous IKEA, you know who they are. Tash, last I, I did, but I don't mean to slag off all employment agencies. I did actually have a good experience with Headspace at Meadowbrook. They sent me someone who's worked out fairly nicely. 
<laughs> so, um, but you know, just the other one didn't, but that was the first one that popped into my mind. But no, no, actually I've had a good experience with Headspace at Meadowbrook. <laughs> very lovely, very lovely. All right, so uh, I'm going to, uh, if there are no more questions, it doesn't look like there are. Thank you very much, guys, for coming along. Remember, next oh, week, um, Wayne Rabnot. Um, I'm going to finish it up here, but uh, we'll see you guys for dentistry very soon. Absolutely. Next group interview. Yeah. Next group interview. <laughs> Which I hope not to do anytime soon, because, you know, I, I, yeah. hopefully I've got a good team that stays well, now and no one gets pregnant. <laughs> 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 That's definitely going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.